Hey, this is Matt from Investic One. Today is Wednesday, September 20, 2023. Before I get started here, I want to let you know we have a new program we're going to be launching this afternoon in a webinar at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So join us after the close for our Auto Trading with IQ webinar. We'll, we will be announcing this new auto trading program and see if this is a, a good fit for you. So the link to sign up is going to be below this video, or you can go to our website and under learn more, there's a webinar link right here that you can click on. It'll take you to this page, fill out your name and email, and you will get the link to join us as well as the recording of the webinar. All right, let's hop into today's daily IQ. Today's the FOMC announcement. So we're going to take a look at what's happened on this day historically when gapping up in a bull market environment. I've got all four instruments selected here. Our setups based upon entering long at 9:30 a.m. Eastern Time, exiting at 4:15 p.m. Eastern Time. Now currently we are trading higher. I'm adding that to the test by clicking on gap up from the opening filters. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the indicators library and because FOMC announcement only happens, you know, every what six weeks or eight times a year, something like that. So we're going to keep just one indicator here, not get too specific on it. So we're going to go with above a 200 day simple moving average. And then on the market events library, we're going to add that today is the FOMC announcement. That's right over here in the act of today section. I've got that selected. Now I can click view results. All right, here we go. These are the results based upon entering the market long at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, exiting at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time when gapping up on the FOMC announcement when you are above a 200-day simple moving average. Historically, we have 76 samples here in the S&P, 84 in the NASDAQ, 66 in the Dow, 66 in the Russell. Win rates on these coming in a touch light. S&P, 38% of those closing above the opening print. For the NASDAQ, it is 51%. For the Dow, 44%. For the Russell, 44%. We take a look at the average moves. Average move to the upside, a bit larger here in the S&P. Uh, for the NASDAQ, it's the average move to the downside that's larger. That's also the case in the Dow and in the Russell. So we're a bit mixed here on which side has uh, the average moves that are larger. And win rates on these, mostly weak. Uh, NASDAQ being the one that's coming in a bit more neutral. Let's see, this is the S&P equity curve. This one's the NASDAQ. That's the Dow, that's the Russell. Uh, let's scroll down here a little bit, look at a little bit more information. See, these are the past 10 sessions here. It looks like there's uh, been one, two, three, four, five, six of them in the S&P that have closed above the opening print in the past uh, 10 of those sessions. Anyway, hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, the link for our webinar is gonna be underneath this video. Go ahead and sign up and we will see you this afternoon.